Oh, hello there. Welcome back to the Genius Brewing Channel. <laughs> we are uh, really excited for this video. This is something that's been a long time in the making. We've been processing slash working on putting it together for a good hot minute. And pause. And welcome back to our welcome back. Try number three. <laughs> Fourth time trying this. Try everything four times, right? <laughs> Today we have a video for you that we are very excited about because it's been a long time in the making. It's something that took a extra special vacation trip to make. Yeah, AKA I went down to Portland after going to Bend, but that's a different story. Yeah. And uh, anyway, when I was in Portland, I stopped at Imperial Yeast and Turns out these guys are making some awesome product in some amazing ways. Awesome guys down there, they really know their stuff, really know yeast, but they get into some pretty hardcore vocabulary and You can verbiage. tell they're nerds who hang out with nerds all the time. <laughs> Not unlike ourselves, but in a much different way. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so anyway, we're just going to go over a few quick kind of words before we cut into the video and the meat of it and the awesome tour. That and let I Jess got. and Owen take it over. Mostly Owen, I think, for this video, yeah. but we have another video. Stay tuned for that. Uh, so first we want to talk about their uh, their cell counting method. They go in, they talk about their cell counter in the very beginning. And all they're talking about there is an automated machine that counts the numbers of cells uh, and they happen to use a fluorescent dye instead of the methylene blue dye and that's just uh, what their uh, their automated cell counter uses to recognize the cells. So they yep. dye the cells and then their counter can see what yeah. it is. So these guys have literally got a computer that does what uh, normally a small brewery, for instance, would do by hand. Yeah, and that's a, they talk about that again towards the end of it with a HEMA cytometer. That's the more traditional way of cell counting is a yep. HEMA cytometer. Uh, and that's a person like looking at fields of cells and yep. little grids and stuff, pain in the butt. Counting the, uh, the number of them. So that's what those are. Um, they also talk about in, in the whole cell counter, the reason that's important is the number uh, dilution to a number of cells per liter, basically. Yep. You'll hear him talk about that, uh, what is it, 1.29 billion, yeah, 1.29 million cells billion, per liter. Billion cells per liter. Per liter, yeah, sorry. Yeah. And yeah. that's just so that they know, they, you know, they, they can count the number of cells and then uh, they know basically the density of cells in their slurry and then they yep. can calculate how many cells they're putting into your yep. packets of yeast and how many of cells they're getting off of their big tanks. Because these guys got to be exact. Yeah. Ding! Um, they also talk about an invisible sentinel for PCR. PCR stands for polymerase chain reaction. And what that is is a, uh, a fancy way of saying that they're, they're multiplying DNA. And so they're isolating specific strands of DNA and multiplying those into a, basically a chunk of DNA or a, a bunch of DNA big enough that they can actually yeah, tell what's it. Yeah, makes it really easy to measure and see. Yeah. And they do that so they can test for uh, abstract yeast strains, specifically diastaticus. Which is a nasty one that's been getting stuff. Yeah, if you want to see some links to some articles on what Diastaticus has done in recent Put them news. Down below. They will be down below. <laughs> uh, let's see, anything else? Uh, something about a peristalsis pump. That's basically a pump that kind of works like your esophagus to squeeze things through along the tube. You really good for yeast. Super that sanitary is, that way. Yeah, it's super sanitary. You can and can, height, hose. Yeah, and, and it uh, can move more solids than like a regular pump can. Yep. Um, Chain I, former, they talk about a chain former basically. That's a, nope. uh, yep. Uh, and that's, I, I'm more used to seeing chain former in, uh, in bacteria. It's, you know, bacteria yeah. that, that clump together. And so it's really, it's more hard for an automated. It's not as common in use, but there are use that I think, uh, I think what happens is they don't bud, they don't split off completely. And so you get some that kind of tend to clump together a little bit more. But it makes those guys hard to count. Yeah. So he, that's why he's using a hem hemocytometer, is because his automated reader can't, uh, can't read chain forming uh, yeast as easily. Yep. So. All right, well, I think that about sums it up. So let's cut into the video and enjoy. Grab a beer. Take it away, Owen. <laughs> All right, so this is about 10 feet away from our uh, offices. This is our uh, new lab expansion. Uh, took over some old offices. We hope to get a bigger building in a couple years, but we're not quite there yet. We have our cell counter here, automated cell counter, Nexalomix 2. Um, dual field for fluorescent, so it's a little more... Um, exact than methylene blue we get better readings with it and we can also take a much larger sample since it's an automated process and that helps us concentrate or dilute every strain to the same lab level uh, 1.29 billion cells per mil uh, and then kind of going down uh, some weights automated pipettes chemis uh, invisible sentinel for pcr for diastaticus detection uh, we still do have to use a microscope and a hematometer for a couple strains that are chain formers are really hard to count through the uh, Nexalom. So we have a microscope there. Um, 
got a new tiny little lab hood. That's our first new hood. Every other hood has been bought off Craigslist, so pretty big deal for us to be able to get something new. This is our original lab. Um, we have commercial pouring stations here, our large fume hood. Um, so anytime yeast is QC'd or opened, it's always under a hood in a sterile environment. Uh, we'll go into here. Uh, this little fridge has all of our working slants. I don't know if you can see those in here, but we'll have slants and starts moving on. And that's what each fermentation is or propagation is going to start with. Uh, we have our uh, incubated shaker table in here. So we got all of next week's starts or maybe tomorrow's starts and um, uh, some larger flasks being built up. On the back window you can see we're going to have our uh, QC, our differential media plates here. You know, going through plating things out under aerobic and anaerobic conditions with different media, seeing what grows where what should grow where, what shouldn't grow, and seeing if we are able to sell it. Some incubators here, aerobic, anaerobic. Um, a few more commercial pouring stations here. Uh, that's can you kill. Uh, they're doing some slow jams for the afternoon. Uh, so sorry about the slow jams earlier. Um, this is production one, this is where we started. Uh, we have our kettle, uh, it's an incubated or pressure vessel. Um, so right there, that's five, five barrels. We'll brew high grab and blend down with the sterile water system. Um, uh, and then everything goes over here into uh, tanks. You'll see in this room everything from two barrels up to 20 barrel tanks in this room. Uh, you can see we got citrus starting here, uh, A20 lot numbers, autoclave, so we can trace it all the way back. Titration numbers, what our RLU was on the swabs, and then uh, this is on day one of fermentation or propagation here. I uh, got eight liters today. Uh, we got some darkness, some lager strains, uh, and then you know these are 20s and 10s here. Then on the back wall, we'll have 10s, 4s, and 7s. We have glycol lines, and then these are air. We have filtration throughout the building, as well as point filtration right before the tank. Um, Jess talked about it a little bit. All of our inputs are always plated, so air, water, media, anything that touches a tank is plated to make sure that's sterile. So when we do find an infection, we can go and run back and figure it out. Where it's coming from, um, we don't oxygenate, we aerate, so we always have air bubbling up through the tank to make sure we have a homogeneous fermentation, uh, that there's no stratification and that we don't want the yeast to sit on the bottom of the cone and start to starve. We want it to be in contact with as much sugar as possible. Uh, here's our second production area that we're just moving into. This has been this year's project. Uh, we had professionals come in and do glycol instead of myself. Uh, we have a lot of automation that we're putting in for uh, being able to time glycol and air shut off. Here's our new tank. Um, we have uh, about half of these operational. Two of the 30s have been running. The new 30 needs some fixing. Uh, one 10 is running and then the other 10s Hopefully it'll be operational next week. Uh, we're running juice and flagship in here. Looks like the flagship is finishing out at, at about 30, 30 and a quarter barrels in the tank. Um, probably harvesting that tomorrow. And then here's our new kettle. Um, it's uh, uh, 23 barrel versus five barrel. So we're about a five X increase on the hot side. So we did have a big choke point on how much sugar water we can produce in a week. And now that choke point is how much we can clean in a week. So it's really good. Everything shipped out FedEx uh, second day or overnight. Uh, Casey's filling in for Sean. Um, so we got a lot of boxes going out the door today. Uh, we ship Monday to Wednesday for homebrew and um, Monday to Thursday for commercial. Uh, here's the back stock in here. We're in a, just our walk-in back stock, a flagship. Um, go through ales, lagers, Belgians, Germans, all the way through here. You know, gnome, rustic, 
whatever strain we're doing. We try to run out of these every week and then uh, um, keep as fresh a stock as possible. So we have one to two more days and we'll probably clear most of this out and then start again next week. Uh, you asked earlier what my favorite strain is. It's uh, best actually, I like loggers. It's my favorite logger strain. Yeah, here's our, um, our packaging line. We have a little peristaltic pump. Um, everything is concentrated, diluted to the same cell count. So we can package by weight over here. It's just gonna go through the sealer and get um, date coated and then back into the fridge as soon as possible and out to homebrew. Well, that sums it up, <laughs> folks. I hope you all learned a lot on that tour. And you're now clearly experts on yeast and its manufacturing process and have a newfound respect for Imperial, the yeast company. <laughs> There's a lot that goes into it. So anyway, they are also putting out a brand new yeast. It's gonna be in another video we're gonna talk about. And uh, until next time on the Genus Brewing channel, uh, finish your beer, like, subscribe, love on your dog. Let us know what your favorite part of this video was. Down below. Bye, folks. Mm. Mm. <laughs>